Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we put together this sign. It's an outdoor sign that I have indoors now, and it has a bunch of NeoPixels on it. So to make an outdoor LED sign with animations, text scrolling, and that sort of thing is what the project is, and it's fully designed in Fusion 360. So I wanted to walk through the CAD stuff, how I put it together. It's sort of a first woodworking project. So if you're new to woodworking, that's cool. So let's check it out. First up, um, I thought I'd, I'd mention what NeoPixel strip are we using. Uh, this is the mini skinny style, so they're a little bit skinnier than the regular 5050 style package ones. These are 3535s, 30 NeoPixels per meter. I got a full reel, a five meter reel here, so that's a total of 144 pixels. So I wanted to have a low density um, pixel count because they didn't want to worry about like power injection. So when you're doing more than like 200 pixels, you got to worry about um, a beefy power supply. For this project, I'm literally just using a five volt wall charger. So that's really nice. And for the microcontroller, it could be any number of them. Um, right now it's running off of a Feather M4, but I plan to update that to a Metro ESP32 S2. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that stuff uh, as the project progresses. But for now, let's jump into CAD stuff. Take a look at the sign. So here's the uh, the sign, and it's all it's all designed in CAD. And it's fully parametric, so we got lots of user parameters. So we can change up um, the height, the width, the length, the pixel spacing, and all that sort of stuff. Anything that I thought would make sense to update to scale this up or scale it down, uh, we can do that here. Another thing to note is that it's all done in inches. Um, so uh, normally I work in millimeters, uh, but this one I needed to use inches which is fine. So there's this really nice feature called change active units. I just pulled it up now and I tend to switch between them, especially when I am 3D printing these brackets here in the back. So there are some 3D printed brackets. When I export them out as a inch um, with the active units set to inch, the scaling comes out incorrect. So when you're exporting out your STLs, make sure you switch it to millimeters um, because this is something that I found in Fusion uh, to do behavior wise. So. I'll leave it at inches. I didn't change anything, but it's set to inches right now. So yeah, what I want to do is, well, uh, here's, you know, you got strips that go across this board. You have this frame here. You have um, this, uh, these legs here and a base. So it's all standalone. It all fits together. And the main thing about this is that it's fully um, modular. So the frame can come off, the sign comes off of the legs, and the legs can pack down. The whole idea behind this is that when the holidays are over, and you need to put this away in the garage or wherever, the attic, um, it flat packs down very nicely. It doesn't take up much space at all. Uh, so that was the, uh, the first thing I want to do. Um, so let's jump all the way back and kind of figure out what do we do first, right? So the first thing I needed to figure out was how big of a screen do I want? How big of a sign do I want to make? This is something that I had on hand, this sheet of wood. It's 27 by what, 16? 27 by 16 inches. Um, trying to go with a 16 by 9 style um, you know aspect ratio but whatever I had on hand is what um, I wanted to design it off of so I already had this piece of wood that was cut and I figured let me design around that so I added that, that in here 27 by 16 and that's just uh, the the sheet that I have uh, the next thing was to figure out let's forward a little bit was the NeoPixel strip itself so here I'm designing the NeoPixel strip with uh, a very simple uh, design and, and rectangular patterns. But what's going on here is it shows uh, the NeoPixel pitch, uh, the, you know, the, the width and the thickness of the, of, the, uh, of the strip itself. And then with the pattern, I can specify uh, pixel space, which is really the pixel, uh, the spacing between the strips themselves. Uh, so that's how I'm doing that. And then uh, I have another rectangle pander that um, defines the pitch of the LEDs. They're not, um, they're not parametric right now. I can, I could of course make a user parameter for them, but I have it hard coded here because the, the numbers ended up being a little bit weird. Uh, so that's why I have them uh, hard coded at 32.5 millimeters. Notice they're millimeters and not inches. Uh, so you can interchange millimeters and inches just by specifying them with the, uh, with the label MM or IN. So you can interchangeably mix them even if your active units are set to one or the other. So that's nice. So once I figured that out, um, you can still change it around. And I have. Uh, originally, I was going to do a higher density pixel strip. And then I just figured a 12 by 12 NeoPixel uh, grid would work just fine. So that's what I went with. Um, sort of thinking of what I have on hand, cost effect. I already had this strip of this reel on hand. 
I already had this sheet of wood on hand. So again, really working with what I have on hand, um, but making it parametric is great because then if someone else has things that are different on hand, or if I, if I want to switch out a higher density pixel strip, not too hard to do so. So that's the first starters here. Not too much going on. Um, let's move forward and see what else we got. All right, so the next thing I came up with is this frame. This frame is made out of boards that have mitered edges, and they all come together um, uh, to make that the frame. The frame does two things. It kind of masks the outer frame of it, the outer edges of it, and it also covers um, the wiring. So it does two things. It looks great, <laughs> and it actually covers up um, a lot of the uh, the wiring, which aren't there yet. But you'll see that the... Uh, the frame actually goes a bit over uh, the sheet itself. So if we do a section analysis, you can see um, how, how much over. And you'll notice that there's a gap between the frame and the backboard. And that's because um, there are 3D printed spacers that will um, position and keep the NeoPixel strips taut, which is cool. So I needed to have some spacing between those two um, pieces of uh, these, these two components um, it, it to to you know to to accommodate for the clearance so that's that's what's going on there that's why they're separated from each other but originally i didn't plan to do so it wasn't until later in the design that i needed to offset it a bit so that's what i've done already here so i got that so far all right so let's move forward um as i as i work with more woodworking projects i start figuring out that it's important to think about um the structure of your components um, because it can get really messy if you just have a ton of components and you're not grouping them. Uh, so uh, in this in this case here, I have uh, a base right here. And inside the base, I have the base frame. And inside the base frame, I have front, back, left, right. So really, uh, really thinking about um, your really thinking about components as sub modules is super important, and making um, a component for each individual board is, is I think, this the way to do it. So I have all those components there, and then you can see here I have all these extrudes here, and they're all color-coded here because I have uh, color cycling turned on. Color cy cycling turned on is this thing called component, color cycling toggle. You can turn that on or off. That just separates the components by color. So you can see here these colors here in the browser. Uh, match the colors here in the timeline. I've had somebody ask me before, so I figured I'd, I'd take a moment to talk about that. And they help me separate what's what, so that's cool. So all of these boards here are, are a part of the base frame that's inside of the base, because the base is gonna have two modules in it. So I create some more components here. As you can see here, these, these icons here are just component building. So then I have the leg frame, which is its own module, and then I have right, left, top, bottom as well. So then if I fast forward, you can see here that these extrudes here are just um, following through, and that's what I got. So that's the the, the floor here, and then the kind of legs um, that will keep the uh, the sign upright. So I got those there. So if I hide the uh, the frame and the sheet of wood and even the NeoPixel strips. We can see all that's left here are these uh, the main base modules. So again, looking at the base as a whole, this is the whole base, but it's in two sub-modules. We got the frame, which is the bottom base frame, and the legs, which is here. And what's great is that these two pieces are, um, they can come off from each other. They, they come apart from each other and um, they allow it to flat pack down. So that's, that's really nice. So after I built that, I create yet another uh, set of, of things. These are little uh, these are little support legs that will attach um, to the, the bottom base here, and that way this right here will be supported. This uh, this kind of leg. So really, you have this piece here that's all together and, 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 and nailed together, and then you have this piece that slides into that. So uh, so this literally slides in like that. Just imagine this as a group here. If I can move it, this literally slides in like that. And uh, what stops it is the floor. That stops it from going all the way down like that. Um, and I guess if we wanted to, we could screw this in or put a pin or some, something like that through here and here. And that, and that way it would really hold it nice and tight. But I don't plan to do that. I like to keep it modular and easy to pull apart. So that's why I have it set like that. All right, moving forwards. Moving forward, I'm starting to create um, the 3D printed uh, bracket. So I needed a way to attach the frame to the backboard uh, sign itself. So I came up with this frame, 
and I added some chamfers and fillets and things uh, to smooth it out. But it, if you look at it, it's it gets flush with the frame. And if I hide this here, the sheet, you can see here that it elevates. You see, there's some spacing from this surface to the to the to the frame. You got about a half an inch of clearance there, and that allows um, the NeoPixel strips to have some clearance there. So that's what I got going on there. So I made uh, four of those via um, some mirrors, and those just get duplicated by a mirror, and those fit in the corner. They're symmetrical, so I just print one corner bracket four different times, and then uh, that works out really well. Uh, a single screw here and here. Um, these frames are, are should be glued together or, or brad nailed together, and then uh, some screws go inside here. Um, so what's cool about that is that um, this easily comes off, it just slides right out and it has a really tight fit. Um, but if we wanted to make it more secure, we could screw something in here, add a pin, or hot glue these corners in, or, or re even remake these so that there's a covering here uh, so, that, so that it really stays in there securely. But for now, I have it uh, freely uh, able to come off, which is, um, which is nice for, for my use cases. So that's the first 3D printed, their, their corner brackets, and that, that's a really useful thing. The next thing is to create these brackets in the back of the of the um, sign that um, that kind of clip into the uh, the leg the leg support. Uh, so this board here, um, it just it just fits over it and it, and it rests on there and it, and it works really well actually. Um, it doesn't slide from left to right because um, it, these two corners are flush with uh, the edges there. You got two screw holes for each one. Really easy to screw those in and you can screw them out as well so that you can take it apart but this whole unit comes off here, the frame. And I think from there, um, is, is next up is to create the, the, uh, the actual holders for the NeoPixels, right? So um, this is the last thing kind of I, I put together. Um, really, the, 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 the reason why I designed NeoPixel holders is because I did not want to spend a lot of time creating um, a sort of a jig or something, or uh, to, to create equal amount of spacing across all of it. So I figured, why don't I just create a 3D printed holder um, that I don't have to worry about the space because it's already fine tuned in the, the 3D printed part. And then the 3D printed part uh, will also keep the strip taut. So this is what I come up with. I'm just going forward right up until here because this is really it. So um, it's just a strip that is really one strip and then it's mirrored um, three times. So I really start with this thing, right? So I have these these little um, these little holders here. Let me go a little bit forward. There you go. As I start to iron this out. Yeah, so I start to thin this out because I don't need it so thick. Go forward a little bit more. And then here we go. Okay, so I have my screw hole set here. So you can see that. Let me, hold, let me hide the corner brackets for a second. So yeah, so I came up with this one sort of strip. It holds four of them. So if I have 12 across, I only need three of these, and they all repeat, right? So they're thin here, and then they get these little holders here. And these little teeth things right there, they uh, pinch and hold onto the silicone. So it looks like the, the strip is really thin, but that's because uh, clearances and things. When I actually print it out, it gets a lot, you got, it expands a bit. So uh, that's why it looks like it's really uh, not even touching it, um, but it is. And then I have these small screw holders that are chamfered. Uh, here and here on the, on the left and the right side and then I have these drafted edges because when I create a rectangular pattern They kind of stack on top of each other. So here's the pattern three across equal amount of spacing if we look at um, the sketch you can see how I, I created the sketch I did some some math here and um, I got those going out there so I just projected four of these and then I just uh, repeated uh, a set of lines here so you can see there the spacing distance is two inches and we can change that up as we want um, so no big deal there and then I do another mirror for the bottom because they actually need six of them and that's how that works out uh, we could totally remake this so that it doesn't need screws like you could just clip in or something but I figured screws works out it's really really easy and nice secu nicely secured so I figured to go with screws um, but as far as the, the tolerances here, um, they worked out really well. And I like how um, they, they really pinch just 
the silicone covering and not the actual um, flexible PCB because you could crack it or break it. So it, it, it has a really good midpoint. And so once that's all done and wiring actually comes up here, I don't have the wiring um, uh, modeled, but they all kind of daisy chain like that, like this, and then down here as well. It actually goes in a zigzag. So it goes from here, there, here, there. So it just keeps going up and down like that in that pattern. But with this frame fit on top, boy, does it cover it up and it looks great. Um, so I think that's about it. So, so near the end of the assembly, the last things I did was I um, already did a tutorial on this. It's using the arrange tool, the arrange feature in Fusion and multiple sketches, multiple arrange features uh, to create uh, plans, um, a set of plans like this uh, anyway. Um, just on uh, the cutoff, the material that you need to create. So I was able to uh, quickly come up with plans for that. Um, so I just took a screenshot of it and that's about all I did there. I could probably hide these and uh, hide the strip as well. There you go. And then there's the, the final plan. Take a screenshot of that, put some labels on it, and then you can uh, start cutting up your pieces. So that's, that's kind of the whole gist of it. Um, as I save this out though, I do like to kind of move before I do all the arrangement and save it in this state and then turn on all the components so that folks can see it all nice and uh, how it's supposed to be modeled. But this is going to be a learn guide project. Currently, I just wanted to uh, kind of document um, the, the, the CAD stuff. So it's an open source design that folks can take the plans. It's fully, re it's fully parametric so folks can change it out. But that's going to do it for this one. I hope you folks uh, like it. Stay tuned for the, um, the full learn guide that's in the works. And let me know what you guys think of the sign. Are you getting interested in doing woodworking projects? Let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great... I wish that said make a great day. Let's let's go ahead and change it to say that. Make a great day. Uh, I'm using CircuitPython, so it's pretty easy to do so. Make a great day, if I can spell it. So let's see. Make a great day. What a slogan. And that's it for me. Thanks, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye.